brought to you by Northwestern Bell Telephone Company. Your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers who say, thank you, America. Snapper, visit Kelly's Lawnmower Service for big preseason savings during Snapper's Super Value Days. Royal Crown Beverages, for great taste and cola love and fun. Twin City Federal, Twin City Federal is smart banking. Welcome back here to the St. Paul Civic Center with uh, the game coming up. The game I think most people have been waiting for today. Burnsville and Bemidji, both teams with 22 wins and one loss. Uh, Ralph, Bemidji is kind of a mystery. Not a lot of people down here in the cities know too much about them. Well, they, uh, like you said, they only have one loss, and uh, that's uh, due mainly in part to their, uh, their fine goaltender, Steve Peters, as you can take a look. He's 5'9", 135, a junior. And he was 19-1 and one on the year, Tom and fans, a 1.82 goals against average. And on uh, defense, they'll have uh, number 10, Bob Smith, who is the second leading scorer on the team uh, as a defenseman, as well as uh, the other defenseman, Darren Fossen. Johnson, Yetter, and Sauer on the uh, forward line. Bemidji, a uh, rough hitting team, and uh, do quite a bit of scoring and good goals against average. Burnsville, of course, the favorite, uh, for most people at least in this tournament, ranked number one in the state. Tonight, they'll be going uh, with Kevin Gork in goal. On defense, Kevin Schrader and Mike Luckcraft. And up front, Herm Finnegan, Kelly Ramswick, and John Burrell. Live from the St. Paul Civic Center, this is continuing coverage of the 1985 State High School Hockey Tournament. At the St. Paul Civic Center, Ralph John Fritz along with Tom Hanneman. And uh, we had that three-all tie with Minnetonka and Jefferson in three overtimes suspended tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. If you just joined us, that is the first time that uh, that has happened in some nine years because nine years ago, we are told that that rule was implemented, that it would be suspended to the following day, but it's never happened until now. We will televise for you at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Pick it up in the fourth overtime between Minnetonka and Jefferson. Okay, let's see if we can uh, come up with another repeat of that game. Huh? Throw it up to the booth and bring in Paul Brown and Lou Nanny. Thank you, Ralph. And you know, you talk about the last two games, Lou, but yet this is the one people have been waiting for in some respects. Burnsville, 22-1-1 uh, on the year. Bemidji coming in, 22-1. and one. Where's the key matchup in this one? Well, I think it's going to be the uh, strength of Burnsville up front. They've got really a very physical forward line, all three forward lines, and they like to use their body. They've got a great deal of depth. It's going to be an interesting matchup because they've each only had one win, but Burnsville come in as a higher-rated team, and uh, I think if you really took a poll of all the experts, that they would, you know, a landslide, be named as a favorite in this tournament. However, they're getting a real good test right off the bat with Bemidji. You think the first 10, 12 minutes are probably key for Bemidji? No, Bemidji's a very patient hockey club. They're explosive. They can score a lot of goals. I, I think that uh, right now that you know they're ready to play this game and let's go down to the public address announcer and meet the two teams first the sophomore wing at number five lance wernis senior defenseman number six mike luckrath senior defenseman number seven kevin schrader Senior center, number eight, Herm Finnegan. Senior wing, number nine, John Burrell. Senior wing, number 10, Kelly Ramswick. Senior center and wing, number 11, Kevin Featherstone. Senior wing, number 12, Mike Travelin. Senior wing, number 13, Mike Meju. Senior defenseman, number 14, Kurt Hammond. Junior wing, number 15, Scott Bloom. Junior center and wing, number 16, Matt Larson. Junior defenseman, number 17, Steve Trichel. 
junior center and wing, number 18, Steve Ferreira. Senior center and wing, number 20, Don Granado. Senior goaltender, number 21, Kevin Gorg. Senior wing, number 22, Scott Branson. Junior defenseman, number 23, Scott Schultze. Junior defenseman, number 24, Mark Osiki. And senior goaltender, number 30, Greg Jelano. Coaching the Braves, Tom Osiki. And now let's meet the champions of Section 8, the Bemidji Lumberjacks. Junior wing, number two, Tony Lind. Senior center, number three, Scott Johnson. Senior wing, number four, Darren McDonald. Sophomore wing, number five, Rob Sauer. Senior wing, number six, Don Sauer. Senior defenseman, number seven, Scott Osmondson. Junior wing, number eight, George Palava. Senior wing, number nine, Joe Palava. Senior defenseman, number 10, Bob Smith. Senior center, number 11, Jeff Nevitt. Sophomore defenseman, number 12, Randy Roberts. Junior center, number 14, Jason Meyer. Junior wing, number 15, John Yetter. Junior defenseman, number 16, Tony Baker. Junior wing, number 17, Greg Johnson. Junior defenseman, number 18, Darren Fossen. Junior wing, number 19, David Smith. Sophomore goaltender, number 20, Corey Chakowski. Junior goaltender, number 30, Steve Peters. Senior goaltender, number 35, Jason Golden. And coaching the Lumberjacks, Brian Grand. Ladies and gentlemen, your officials for this game are Ray Lorenz and John Bards. On the scoreboard, Burnsville is the visitor, Bemidji the home team. And we might say to the people up in the Bemidji area, according to George and Joe, they would like their name pronounced Palava in this hockey tournament. So that may be a little unfamiliar to some of their friends and family up in the area, but they would prefer it that way, and uh, we will honor that request. Lou, when you talk about the delay, uh, when you talk about the winner of this hockey game, I wouldn't think it'd have an adverse effect going into the semifinals tomorrow night at all, despite the fact that it's starting two hours late. No, it's not going to affect these two teams. The teams it's going to affect is the winner of the, the previous game in Otaka and Jefferson, because they are not going to be able to get too much rest. The latest they can get up is 6.30, and they're going to have to get up and play the game at 9 and play another game. And where it might really affect the winner of that game would be two days from now should they even get by the semifinals that it's really it's very tough on him I, I know some people think that, that it's good and Saturday and uh, felt that well he had some people cramp up but the thing you have to remember is uh, then the coach can't play those kind of players maybe they should have let, let the game the rules there but my feeling is the best condition team maybe would have won and whoever it is that's the name of the game and, and if you can't play someone it's just like someone getting hit with a puck in the foot or something else uh, because of an injury he can't play and, and uh, personally it's uh, my own opinion but i i thought that the game should have continued plus you have to come back at nine o'clock tomorrow morning well, don't you? that's right <laughs> but it's not going to affect me as much as 
you see two teams play that hard, you don't want to see the winner put in an adverse position. At least I don't. I think that they played so hard and so well that now they're not going to get much rest tonight, and it's going to affect them tomorrow and, and the following day. And we're ready to go here from the St. Paul Civic Center, the Burnsville Braves, who have been ranked number one for a good portion of the year. Burrell, Finnegan, and Ramswick will open up against Sauer, Johnson, and Yetter. And this hockey game is underway, and the draw is played down at the Burnsville zone. Going back is Lutkraft around to Schrader. Schrader on the outlet pass to right wing. The Burrell to the blue line. Here's Burrell moving to the net, and he's checked off the puck. And coming back is Bemidji to the blue line of the Braves, and there's a drive in behind the net. Going back over is Schrader, turning, trying to bring it out of the zone. We're just underway, 14-33, remaining in the first period. And it's played past Sauer, out over to center ice, back is Bob Smith. Smith head netting the puck, left wing over to Sauer, chasing it back is Schrader for the Burnsville Braves. As they have lost only one hockey game of the year, and they have tied one. And it's played in on Peters, and Lou, if you would, talk a little bit about Steve Peters, number 30. Well, we've heard a great deal about Peters and being the key to this Bemidji team. He's a quality goaltender. His father was an excellent goaltender at North Dakota. Now the coach of Bemidji State. And if he's anything like his dad, he's going to be tough to beat in the next for Bemidji. And his goals against average is 1.8. His save percentage is 91. He has had an outstanding season. And so has the goaltender for Burnsville. That we'll talk about. Gord, there's his shot from the point. Wide off the stick of Osmondson. 13.56 remaining in the first period. And coming back over to set it up, Bemidji, 22 and 1 on the year. Buck loose at center ice. And playing it away from the stick for Palava, shooting it in. And the save by Gorg. And the rebound is cleared by Burnsville, is getting his uh, stick on the puck was Hammond. Going back over is Osmondson to pick it up. 13 33, remaining in a scoreless first period. Boston with it on the near wing in the pass, intended for Palava. Chasing it down, back of the net, Palava there, overskated the puck, and Burnsville will bring it back out. This is Hammond up ice on the lead pass, intended for Featherstone, whistle and play, stopped at the blue line of Bemidji. Looks like uh, we've got an injured player down on the ice for Bemidji, Hammond. Seems like he's in some kind of pain, and hopefully it's not his knee or anything that can hurt him. If it's just his win, he'll be able to get back in the game. Tom Osiki looking on, 21 years of coaching, 267 victories, 135 losses, and six times. Burnsville has won 17 Minnesota State High School or Minnesota State League title championships as far as their various teams are concerned. It looked like Kurt Hammond is favoring his left leg. He could be hurt seriously. And the score is nothing, nothing. This is Hockey 85, live from the St. Paul Civic. It look, looks like Kurt Hammond uh, sustained an injury to his left leg, maybe his left knee. As he's getting that puck down the ice, and he's being helped off the ice at this moment. It doesn't seem like he's in a great deal of pain, at least. Uh, maybe it's just a bruise. Hopefully it is, so he can come back. Well, I wanted to chat with you a moment about uh, Burnsville. They change in units of five. Talk about... Your impressions of that and what happens now with Hammond, the defenseman, if he's not able to go. And the faceoff, but it's set up back in the Bemidji zone. With it is Baker. Baker is tied up along the boards. Coming over to help out is Bob Smith. He goes down. Lind is there. Whistle and play will be stopped. What about changing in uh, units of five? Well, you get accustomed to playing with the same people all the time. You know their patterns. You know how you're going to break out. But sometimes during the course of the season, you're going to sustain injuries. You're going to have power plays, penalty killing. So you get occasion to play with different people. I don't think it's going to affect them if they do lose a person at all in this uh, tournament. And no score in the hockey game here from the St. Paul Civic Center. But 13 minutes remaining in the first period between Burnsville and Babinji. Here's a two-on-one streak into the net. The shot, and it's fired wide of the mark. As on the left wing was Smith waiting for the pass. It is Smith with the puck on the boards, and he's tied up. And it's clear to the point where Smith holds it in. Broken up there, coming back the other way. Traveling to the blue line, and over the line is Featherstone. to whistle and play will be stopped. WCCO television production facilities have been provided in part by Hilltop Trailer Sales in Northeast Minneapolis, a leader in the RV business since 1951. 
As we expected, Paul, we've seen a good deal of body checking already. Both of these clubs use their body and use it very effectively, and I think you're going to see it throughout the evening. In a nothing-to-nothing -nothing game, we have not had a penalty called yet. And going back in behind is Gord to cut it off as Burnsville regroups to bring it out of their own zone. That is Finnegan moving it ahead in the pass. Ramswick lays it down in the corner as Peters takes a look. Back of the net now. Burnsville really charges the net. Ramswick was out front. There's a shot by Schrader. That went wide. Cleared in the far boards as Baker tried to bring it out. And now Bemidji will clear it to center ice. Bemidji to the blue line of Burnsville. And trying to move it in and get off the shot. Johnson in front of the net. It was cleared away. Held in by Smith trying to go back to Johnson. It was scooped up. And a Gord putting it away. Kevin Gord with a 19-1-1 record and a goals against average of 1.76. The senior, 5'9", 150-pounder. Well, Bemidji's Hockey Club thus far has showed a great deal of speed up front. They've got the good quickness, and they turn that puck up ice quickly. That could present some problems to Burnsville here tonight. Faceoff will come up to the left side of Gord. Get off the dry. It's Ferreira on a potential break. Moving in. Ferreira shot the goal. Well, Pereira breaks away after that puck comes off his skate. He gets a breakaway, comes down, makes a good move. He goes back to his forehand to beat Peters and give Birdville a one nothing lead early in his first period. Steve Pereira giving Birdville a one to nothing lead in his first period on a breakaway goal. Watch him come down, and he makes a good move to his backhand, and that's a normal move for a person. Peters goes for that a bit, and he comes back to his forehand, gets it up on the short side, and just beats Peters' glove. The one to nothing score, putting the Burnsville Braves out in front here by a score of one nothing at the 11:48 mark remaining here in the first period. That's a tougher move for a stick handler to go to your forehand. The natural move is always to go to your backhand, and if you can perfect that move, you can get a great deal of advantage out of it. Herrera had 28 points during the regular season, 14 goals, 14 assists. And uh, one assist was given on the goal, and that to Don Granado. Got it set up. There's a shot by Ferreira off the top of the boards. Palava with the puck turning, trying to bring it out. Got it comes left wing as Sauer overskated the puck. Knocked down by Osiki. Osiki tried to bring it out of the zone. Meyer trying to hold it in. Puck loose down to the corner on the near boards. Burnsville out in front here, one to nothing. And it's moved up ice. Ferreira and Smith. Smith trying to get back down to the corner. And uh, there's a break in the action. It will be right back with a better the one to nothing lead. Ferreira had two goals in the tournament last year. Burnsville has been in two previous tournaments, third in a row, and that experience should help, Lou. It certainly should. This team has a great deal of it been together for quite some time now, and they're showing the benefits of it. And the puck is loose along the near boards as Bemidji will work it out to center ice. That is Nevitt. Nevitt in over the line, pass to Smith. And it was cleared from his stick and turned back, but held in by Smith at the point. Or pardon me, it was Foshin behind the net. Trying to pick it up is Smith. Smith moved it right out in front, trying to get help from uh, Lind. Lind on the left wing boards. Back to the point on the pass. Over to Foshin. Back down to the corner on the pass to Lind. Worked behind the net. Smith working there to try to free the puck. And we have 10.34 remaining. And now breaking it out of the zone is Branson. Off on the wing pass, the return to Branson went behind him. Whistle, and play will be stopped in the offside of the blue line of Bemidji. As we see Branson skate off the ice, he just saw what it means to have those big, strong defensemen around the net as it looked like Bemidji was going to put some pressure on. Nevitt was leveled with a check. Smith was taken out with another check, and Bergwell was able to bring that puck up the ice. And that's what they do very well. They use their bodies to control the, the play in their own zone. They squeeze people off the puck to get control and move it up. In a one to nothing game with 10.25 remaining in the first period. Burnsville is out in front. And the Braves will set it back up in the far wing to bring it out of their own zone. Both teams at equal strength. They try to go right wing to Burrell, but it's pushed along the far boards. And striding back is Baker, angling it off the boards with now 10.05 remaining in the period. Held in by Schrader at the point, centering pass from Finnegan in the slot, cleared. Up ice on the left wing, it's Sauer chasing it down to the corner. Schrader is there, and an icing will be called on the Lumberjacks of Bemidji. Bemidji now getting a little more pressure put on them by the forwards of Burnsville, not being able to complete the pass as smoothly as they did earlier. 
resulting in some icings like this or a few turnovers to Burnsville. Burnsville getting their skating lanes. They're very powerful hockey club. They look strong, just physical, physically strong out there, even when they're skating. And they, they've got that strength to create opportunities for themselves. And uh, great scoring balance. Uh, they have a total of 11 players who have more than 24 points in the season. As Burnsville will work the near boards to try and set it up, but Bemidji clears it out of their own zone. Knocked down to the center zone, picked up by Meyer. And over the line, chasing it down as uh, whistle and play will be stopped and brought back out to center ice. You'd say, what's the name of their game? And it's called pay the price. If you want to make a play, you're going to get hit. You have to pay the price. And that's the way they play the game. And they play it very well doing that. 13 seniors on this particular hockey team uh, from Burnsville. Nine on last year's tournament team for the Burnsville Braves. This is Osiki back of the net, and he's tied up by Palava. Off on the far wing, Meyer trying to hold it in. It's played out over to center ice, broken off by Fossen. And the puck loose at center ice as uh, Bemidji chasing it down on the far wing, taken away by Schulze. Schulze back to the blue line of Bemidji. Burnsville setting it up. They got Ferrara moving to the net out in front shot, and it's blocked and knocked by, down by Peters, chased along the far boards. And Bemidji will try to work it out of the zone. Coming back is Osmondson, working behind the net to Fossen, angling it off the boards to center ice, broken up by Hammond. Or pardon me, that was Osiki. Osiki playing it back in over the line. Osmondson playing it ahead again, and we're going to have the Braves going back over to set it up now. 8.48 remaining in the first period. 1-0 Burnsville out in front, and the goal by Ferreira. Knocked down along the boards, down in the corner. It's Featherstone trying to center it. And a whistle and play will be stopped. And there's a break in the action. And we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School. He's recovered from that knee uh, injury. It seemingly was just bruised. And so he's able to get back out there on the ice south of Burnsville. Both teams at full strength. And moving it up, Ice is Smith. And whistle and play stop as it goes up over the plexiglass and out of play. Number 10 on defense for Bemidji is Bob Smith. He had the most assists on the team. He's very creative back there. He's a fellow that's uh, next to Palava. You have to really worry about when you're looking at the Bemidji team and their scoring ability. He is the fourth Smith to play hockey. Uh, and uh, a couple of his brothers uh, had outstanding careers up at Bemidji High School. And a loose along the boards. There's a drop pass and a shot. And it was knocked down as Smith took it. And Burnsville will bring it back. Here's Branson moving up ice with Featherstone. Featherstone and Branson in the corner, but it's cleared by Smith. Burnsville trying to control the puck. It comes to the air wing. Featherstone moved it to the slot. Branson moved it back in on Peters, and he uh, put it away in the glove, clutching it on the near side of the cage, and action is stopped at the 803 mark. Well, Peters had a real difficult save earlier. We didn't get a chance to talk about it, but Scott Bloom was coming down the left side. He saw Ferreira on the right. The defenseman went over to Ferreira, and that man, Peters, saw that his defenseman made the right play, took the wing, and he just played Scott Bloom. Bloom had nowhere to go. He tried to put it upstairs, but Peters made the save. Out now is Finnegan, Burrell, and Ramswick. Both teams at equal strength. Schrader and Luckraff. Out is Sauer, Johnson, and Yetter for Bemidji. And the puck is loose, back of the net, trying to center it down. Moving across the crease was Finnegan. Finnegan on the left wing, going for Ramsvik. Played back of the net, this is Burrell on the centering pass to Ramsvik. And it's played loose down in the corner on the near board, 7.45. Remaining in the first period. And moving it back up ice, here's Scott Johnson. And over the line to Sauer, back to Johnson, moving it in. Time to go, and a beauty. Johnson. That was just beautiful. A double passing play coming down the ice. Johnson to Sauer. Sauer using good feet on the outside was able to pull that defense. But look at him right here, number six. He pulls his defenseman and drops it back to Scott Johnson, who pulls it away then to the far side on a very quick, nifty move by the goaltender to tie this game at one. What a great play by Johnson and Sauer. Sauer uses Johnson perfectly there, and it took excellent hands by Johnson to pull that puck away from the defenseman, Lutcraft, and then across the right pass forward and tie this game at one. That's when you put in the instructional film, uh, huh? That was beautiful. Boy, that's a nice goal. And a 1-1 game at the 7.35 mark. And I'm sure that Scott Johnson with a big smile on his face. He had 34 points on the year. And it's set up by Palava and taken away. Burnsville moving it in. This is Burrell with a shot and the save by Peter. Well, Peters had Burrell 
shot coming up high, and he saw at the same time Finnegan bearing down the middle, so he just took that puck in his belly, throws it, got the face off. And it will come up to his left side or his glove side. At 7.26 remaining in the first period in a 1-1 game, the fourth game of the day. It has been a long day. We thank you for staying with us here. And uh, it's loose. Freighter waiting at the point. Out it's played down in the corner going back. Burrell tried to center it. And it's loose in front of Peters. Action is going to be stopped as three Bemidji Lumberjacks are there. There's a break in the action. And we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. 1-1 the score with 7-16 remaining here in the first period. Coming to you from the St. Paul Civic Center. And the faceoff. Granado trying to draw it forward. And it was held in by Bloom. Played back out over to center ice. And with it on the near board, Zosiki almost had it taken away by Sauer. Knocked down as Bemidji now. Lifting it to the Burnsville line. The Burnsville Braves with the puck. There is Ferreira trying to lead uh, Granado on the pass. And it's picked up by Smith. Bob Smith in over the line with a wrist shot. Block knocked down. And the rebound uh, goes right into the glove of Gorg. And he made the save. Well, you see Bob Smith, why he's got so many assists. He's not afraid to move on that puck and move with it. He comes up the ice, and Kevin Gorg right there had to take a rebound shot off Smith out of the air and get the face off to his right. And the face off coming up now with uh, 6.50 remaining in the first period. 1-1 one, one the score. No penalties called in the game so far. Played around the boards by Hammond trying to bring it out. It was held in by Osmondson. Played back to the net, back to uh, center ice in the near boards, and Fawcett with it. Fawcett played it back in over the Burnsville line. Docking it down is Freichel. Michael and uh, the puck played uh, an action stop on the far boards. Well, you see a great deal of willingness on Bemidji's part to trade body check for body check with Burnsville. And they're using their bodies effectively up front. Anytime they go to a man, the Burnsville man, they're willing to take them out and use their body. And that's something that they're going to have to do to beat this Burnsville hockey team because that's Burnsville's strength. you got to go right back at him with those body checks if he's going to win. And it was set up by Lind after the faceoff because of the offside. On the far boards with it is Nevitt. Nevitt down in the corner, and he is tied up. And uh, Osmondson is there trying to get help. Featherstone there. They tied up along the board. 6-15 remaining. Recapping the goals of this hockey game so far. And it's a 1-1 contest as Scott Johnson has scored for Bermidji. And uh, Ferreira has scored for the Burnsville Braves. Face off coming up to the right side of Steve Peters. Both teams full strength. And uh, the face off is played the back of the net going over as Fawcett. This is Fawcett looking up ice, head up, playing it up ice in the far wing. Knocked down on the boards by Trichel. Played it back down to the Bemidji zone as Steve Peters cuts it off. And going back, the Lumberjacks will regroup and bring it out on the near boards. Over to Sauer. Sauer moving up ice with Johnson on his left. Johnson striding down to the corner. Cut off as he trying to pick up the loose puck. Johnson playing it away from Sauer to Johnson. Trying to go to Yetter in the slot. Cleared back to neutral ice. Back into the head by Fawcett. Broken up by Sauer at center ice. Sauer moving past Larson. Sauer in over the line. He's got Johnson in front of the net. Sauer tried to center it to him. And it was cleared and set up by Schulze. As moving back up ice, here's Wernus. Wernus and Larson and Meju out as a unit now. Meju chasing it down. Centered it toward the slot. Back to the point on the far side over to Schulze. And uh, Schulze with a puck down in the corner in the far wing tied up. And play will be stopped with uh, 5-12 remaining in the first period. Well, Birdsville coming out with their fourth line at that time, giving their top gunners a rest. And they came down, and Meshu centered that pass out, just missing Larson. Otherwise, he had a good opportunity to score a goal. But just previous to that, we saw the great speed of Don Sauer. He created that first goal by going outside, setting up Scott Johnson. And he almost had Johnson again in the slot, as this time he went around the outside, trying to backhand a pass, and it was just intercepted. And the faceoff will come up to the right side of Peters in a 1-1 hockey game. Palava with the puck. Palava head manning it out to Meyer. Meyer leading it to Sauer. Here's Sauer chasing it down in the corner, but on with Schrader for Burnsville. And uh, it's Schrader whipping it around the boards as Bemidji holding it in. But it is Sauer taking off his stick. Puck round there. And it's played ahead by Ramswick. Whistle and play will be stopped with 4.52 remaining here 
in the first period. Bemidji is 0-1 against uh, other tournament opponents, while Birdsville 3-1 against other tournament opponents so far. Well, we see that uh, Hemingham gave Bemidji their only loss, and the only loss of Birdsville came from Bloomington Jefferson. And a 3-1 game was the score there, and Jefferson uh, was a 3-1 game as well, so... Boy, Lou, when you go through uh, the caliber of competition of high school hockey in the state and only lose one game, you've had a great year, haven't you? That's right, especially the team today. There's so much balance around the state. You know that you're going to be facing a tough game day in and day out. And that is Schrader angling it off to far boards. Bemidji trying to break it out of their own zone. And it was held in by Ramsvik. Ramsvik with the puck. They have Burrell in front of the net, and he's tied up. Can't work his way loose, and it's cleared by Meyer. Held in by Ramswick, and he centered it to the slot. Moved past Finnegan, back over to center ice to Schrader. Schrader going cross ice over to Luckraff. And Luckraff playing it down in, and Peters will cut it off there. Angled around the boards. We have 4 14 remaining in the first period. 1 1 the score at the St. Paul Civic Center between Burnsville and Bemidji. And play will be stopped in the corner. The score is 1-1. This is Hockey 85, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. 4 7 remaining here in the first period. 1-1 the score. Faceoff coming to the left side of Steve Peters. No penalties called in the game so far. And a close checking game here in the first period. And trying to bring it out. And there's a shot kicked out by Peters. A back enter is taken by Ferreira. And the save is made again. Well, Peters had the rebound go off to the right, but he moved across very smoothly. He was able to maintain his balance, and he got that backhand shot. Ferreira didn't get a great deal on, but he got enough that it would have gone in the net, but Peters made a good move across and smothered it. Tornado fired it wide. After the faceoff, back to the point of the right, and it was held in by Osiki, turning Granada with another shot. Granada with 36 points on the year, as Bemidji will now move it up ice. In an equal strength situation to the blue line of the Braves, out of whistle and play will be stopped on the offside call. Granado tried a good move on the faceoff there. Rather than drawing the puck back as you usually do, he stepped through the centerman and got a shot away. He missed the net, but at least he tried an attempt to put a shot on goal. So often when you're facing off, people just expect you to draw it back, and you've got the opportunity to slip by. And that's only the second time I've seen that done today. Chris Swenson tried it once in the earlier game tonight, but he didn't get away with it. And the faceoff will come up just outside the Braves zone with 344 remaining in the first period. Out is the Ferreira Granado and Bloom line. Bloom was all Metro Conference. It's played back along the far wing over to pick it up. Is Palaba taken away from his stick? And here's Osiki on the lead to Ferreira. Ferreira moving past the check, chasing it down to the corner. As uh, Granado goes down, as Burnsville trying to set it up, a back hitter. Ferreira took the shot. And the save is made and the rebound is clear. Out over to center ice as Bemidji here in a 1-1 game setting it up in the neutral zone. He'll bring it back in over the blue line and with it is Baker trying to move toward the net. Johnson over the to Buck. And coming back to Burnsville Braves. Out over to center ice. In over the line. This is Bloom on the right side. Cleared from the puck in on the way back. Let's go the other way. Here's Sauer in over the line. Sauer moving on the right wing, trying to drop pass to Johnson, taken back. And now Burnsville will move it in over the line. It's Featherstone with the puck, and he's bumped by Smith. Bemidji trying to clear it out of their own zone with 2.45 remaining. Here in the first period, they tie it up along the fireboards, and it will have a faceoff coming up. Well, Bemidji had a great play by Darren Foss, and Bloom coming down on him. He took his position perfectly right in front of him, didn't give him anything. He squeezed him off to the boards, and even though Bloom was big and strong, he was able to ride him off the puck and break Don Sauer away. And we have a one-to-one -one game to face off, and it's played by Hammond back of the net. Burnsville trying to set it up, cleared from the slot area. Bemidji back up ice at a three-on-three. Three. Here's Palava. Palava with a shot, and it was steered aside. Palava down to the corner trying to get some help from Meyer to set it up to the point. And breaking it up ice here. We'll begin over the line as Branson. He's got to a Featherstone with a shot. He kept it wide. And the rebound. They have another man out front. Shot of the save is made. As Traveling was right in front of the net. Back to the point on the left side. Cross ice over to Hammond. And his shot is deflected down to the corner. Another shot is fired wide. Back over to the point on the left. And there's Keichel with a shot. 
And Bemidji will clear it out of the zone as they drive it in on Gore. And going back over is Treichel. Treichel whipping it around in the near boards to Hammond. Hammond on the breakout. He's cut off as Branson trying to control the puck. Knocked down and played back in over the blue line of Bemidji. As Peters will play it behind the net. Hustling in is Wernis. Wernis working behind the net. He's tied up as uh, the Lumberjacks now will set it up to bring it out of their own zone. That is Lind with the puck. Left side of the pass. In over the line, Smith tried to work it to the slot. And the Braves turn it around. Back up ice coming the other way. Here's Larson in over the line. Left side over the Wernis. Larson over the shot. And it was deflected wide by Peters. The rebound in on the far wing to Nevitt. Nevitt trying to get help from Lynn to bring it out of the zone. Broken up by Wernis. Wernis will turn, try to play it ahead. 107 remaining in the first period in a 1-1 game here. And going back over is Marco Siki. We have one minute remaining in the period. The pass comes to Meiju, and that is broken up at the blue line of Bemidji, knocked down in the neutral zone, and uh, the Braves will regroup. And Ramswick with it, playing it down to the far wing corner. Hustling back is Smith quickly. Smith is circling behind his own net. On the pass now, trying to bring it out of the zone. Baker with help now, moving it up ice. 35 seconds remaining as Ramswick tries to hold his zone. Bemidji not can to get to the Braves line, broken up there. And it's Burrell on the late pass to Finnegan. Laid in over the blue line of the Lumberjacks. And now coming back the other way, this is Sauer with a puck, trailing is Johnson. And it was taken away by Luckraft, picked up by Johnson. And Burnsville tries to bring it out. It's held in a shot blocked by Schrader. Rebound to Johnson, cleared by Luckraft. And I believe we've had our first penalty call, Lou. You're going to see a first penalty come to Burnsville right now. And Burnsville had to actually take that penalty. Mike Luckraft had to pull down Scott Johnson because Sauer was standing all alone in front of the net, and Johnson got that puck. It would have been 2-0 on, on goaltender Kevin Gord, but Mitchie going on the power play with seven seconds to go in this period, and so if they don't score in the seven seconds, they'll start off the next period with a chance to give them a great boost by pulling into the lead. We've got a 1-1 tie here, and Bemidji playing very solidly. One thing I, I'm very, very impressed with on Bemidji's team is the way Peters moves in the net technically. Here we see the penalty, he had to get pulled down right there by Luttraff because on the left of your screen you saw Sauer standing all alone. And uh, we have four seconds remaining in the first period, and this is going to do it here for the time in the first period. Ferreira with the goal for Burnsville, and it was Scott Johnson scoring for Bemidji. The Lumberjacks and the Braves are tied at one goal apiece here as we have come to the end of uh, play after one period. And Lou, uh, anything in that first period surprised you a little bit? Well, uh, I think uh, Bemidji's quickness, they've got a great deal of quickness up front, which is going to put some pressure on the Burnsville defense. But more than that, just the poise that I, I should have expected it because Bob Peters himself was such a fine goaltender. But his son moves in the net. He moves across the net so well, he's always in perfect control. So he's able to get to some of the rebounds. The only problem that Bemidji's having right now is handling the puck around their net. And that could cause them you know, a couple goals if they don't turn that puck up ice quicker and smoother than they're doing. And we still have two more periods in regulation time to go, but right now let's go back to sports control. Okay. Waiting for that uh, last Jefferson Minnetonka game to end, but that obviously was not the case. A very exciting first period of action. Well, I spoke with Burnsville coach Tom Osiki right before they went on the ice earlier, and, uh, you know, I said, well, what does this do to your team? He said, really not that much. He said, we're relaxed. We're going to, you know, just go out and play our regular game, and uh, it's really been an excellent first period. 1-1 one, one after 1, and uh, we're going to go right back to the ice now and to uh, bring in Tony Parker. Well, we're down here with the person who's got a lot going in this game as far as Burnsville is concerned. This is Bev Osiki, whose son, Mark, of course, plays for the Braves and whose husband coaches the Braves. Bev, you were telling me before we came on the air, it was tense this week at your house. Very tense. Very. Putting it mildly. It's tense. When did you get rid of your crew? Wednesday morning, they had an assembly at the high school at 7.30, and then they went to decathlon for breakfast and uh, left. Hey, you can tell us which of the two guys, Tom or your son Mark, was the most uptight this week? Hard to tell. They're both the same. They're quiet. Really hard to tell. Yeah, but you really know which one. Probably Tom. Probably Tom, huh? <laughs> Probably Tom. You've got one other hockey player in the family? Matt 
Matthew, who's in seventh grade. He's a peewee. They just lost on Sunday their last game to Coon Rapids, or they would have been going to state. Well, I'm glad I got you here with a 1-1 tie. I can say good luck, and everything's going to be all right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bev. Now back to sports control. There's a real hockey mom in every sense of the word. 1-1, Burnsville and Bemidji. This is continuing coverage of the 1985 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Bemidji won after one period of play, and uh, Burnsville commanded this game, averaging six goals per game. They got the first of tonight's game as we take a look at the highlights. Uh, it looked like they were going to be rolling right along uh, against Bemidji here, but that was the, uh, the extent of it, a breakaway for Ferreira. Steve Ferreira, number 18 of Burnsville on the breakaway, makes it 1-0, and... Uh, Burnsville on top. There's a good look at it. Uh, the deke and the goal. 1-0 Burnsville. But Bemidji came back, Tom. That's right. With the nicest goal of the day, I think. Don Sauer pulls the defenseman with him and then passes the puck back to Scott Johnson, who did the rest. And look at it. Some great moves in front. He beats Kevin Gork on the backhand. That is certainly worth another look. Don Sauer moves in, takes the defenseman with him, and really a terrific job there by Scott Johnson, who beats Kevin Gork on the backhand. Well, you mentioned Gorg. Uh, Steve Peters also played some uh, fine goaltend uh, in that first period. Steve Peters here on a save against Mike Travelant. And uh, there were some pretty good opportunities for both teams uh, with this only being a 1-1 score after the first period. Uh, we should bring the folks up to date. Uh, in the first game today, Anoka defeated Hastings in a shootout. It was 11-5 for the Anoka Tornadoes advancing to tomorrow's semifinals. In uh, that second game, Hill Murray with a 4-3 win over Hibbing. And then, of course, tonight uh, in our game that we couldn't decide, Minnetonka and Jefferson, 3-3 three, three after 3. That'll be resumed at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. In this game, Bemidji and Burnsville were tied at 1 after 1. That's right. Live from the St. Paul Civic Center, this is continuing coverage of the 1985 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Well, we have a 1-1 score, and before we uh, toss it up to the booth for uh, period number two, let's take a look at uh, the saves. Actually, the Burnsville Braves applying the most of the pressure, Tom, because, as you see, Peters uh, with 11 uh, saves for Bemidji, and Gorg of Burnsville, seven saves. Th those are the first period saves. We go now back to the booth, and come on in, Louie and Paul. Thank you, Ralph. And, Lou, what would you expect now that the two teams would have talked about in the locker room heading into period number two? Well, I think uh, Bemidji's going to try and move that puck out quicker and smoother because of the strong forechecking at Burnsville and allowing Burnsville to get some of those shots. At the same time, I think Burnsville can continue to use their body. We've got to remember that Bemidji's got a power play starting the second period, and that's the most important thing. They've got a chance to go ahead. Lutcraft went off for a hooking with only seven seconds to go in that first period. Bemidji on the power play. We haven't seen what it looks like, but if they move that puck around sharply as... Uh, we saw them do a couple times. They could get some chances on this Bemidji Hockey Club, but, or on this Burnsville Hockey Team. But we have to remember that Burnsville is a very solid, strong team, and I wouldn't expect that they're going to lay back killing the penalty. They might even be aggressive, try and come out and put some pressure on Bemidji, hoping to get a chance or two of their own while they're killing the penalty. I was just going to say, uh, Lou, that's one of the scouting reports on the Burnsville Braves, is the fact that they are very aggressive when they're a man down. Uh, you talk about Bemidji and their scoring potential. Uh, they have great balance in their top three lines. In fact, all of the lines individually have accounted for 70 to 80 points on each line. We were just looking at goaltender Steve Peters, and he had a great game against Hibbing up there. He kicked out 36, 36 shots, and you know he's capable of doing that again. So that's got to be in the minds of this Burnsville Hockey Club. He's a tough goaltender to beat. Very, very smooth in the net. Very oh. technically sound. Okay, we're ready to go. 153 remaining in the penalty time. And Smith fell down, and it's held in. Burnsville, a man short. Played by Burrell down in the corner as Finnegan goes behind the net over to try and pick it up. Again, remember, it is Burnsville who is down a man here. And the penalty time showing 140 remaining in the power play for the Lumberjacks of Bemidji. Well, John Burrell right there is... Very quick. He's played a long time with Herb Finnegan. They know the moves of one another, and they're dangerous one out there, even though they're a man short. And Peters watching it go behind his own net. And uh, the Burnsville Braves go back and setting it up now is Johnson. Johnson will work it out. He was upended, gets up quickly, head manning the puck up on the far wing. Never chasing it down, but the Braves clear it back in the Bemidji zone as Peters waiting there and coming back to set it up once again. 
117 remaining in the man advantage. And with the puck is Smith. Is Smith at center ice. Lost control of it. And trying to play it away was Bloom who was at center ice. And Bemidji will regroup. Uh, Smith with the puck on the lead pass. Will they get up ice? Here's Boston. Whistle and an offside will be called at the blue line. Well, Bemidji's not moving that puck up quickly enough, and they're getting forechecked by the forwards of Burnsville. They haven't been able to penetrate. They've got to try a long pass, try and get that puck into the Burnsville zone. Otherwise, this penalty uh, opportunity that they're having right now at the beginning of the period is going to be negated. There's only a minute and one second left in it. Palava waiting to the right in the faceoff from Johnson. The draw is set up. And with the puck now, the man advantage, Yetter going cross ice. 14 minutes remaining. Here in the second period, it is Nevitt tied up and bumped along the boards. Palava, Palava with the puck. Palava working the left wing. And the pass off and a shot. Knocked down to the save is made. Palava with another shot. Played down to the corner over to Nevitt. Nevitt with the puck on the far side. Goes to the point on the pass to Fawson. Back over to Palava. And Schrader bumping him down in the corner. Nevitt over to pick it up. We have 29 seconds remaining in the man advantage. And the puck is frozen along the far boards. And we'll have a face-off coming up. Well, Kevin Schrader using his body to a perfection right there, making sure that he knocked both Bemidji men down, finally causing a face-off, and that's something you could expect a Burnsville defenseman to do. They're big and strong, and they like to use their weight, and they use it so that they clear areas in front of the net or they get the guys tied up along the boards and not allow them to walk over that puck. And the move to get in, a shot, and it's knocked down, and the save is made by Gorg. As it was fired, moving in from the right side was Yetter. But the glove save by Gore. A good shot by Tony Baker back at the point. And at the same time, Palava, George Palava, was moving towards the net. You'll see him that's number eight, the big fella, screening in front. And there's a shot by Tony Baker. And the save was made, and then Gore fell on that rebound. And we're down to 20 seconds remaining. Back to the point, going cross ice in the pass. And it's knocked down, loose along the boards on the near side. And it was held in by Yetter. Yetter chasing it down in the corner, trying to get some help from Johnson. Going cross ice in the pass to Fawson on the left wing. And Fawson at the point had it taken away. And both teams are back at full strength here. Burnsville in over the line. Burnsville with a shot. Ramswick took it. And it's Luckraff down in the corner. Luckraff trying to center it. Moved right out in front. Heavy traffic and a backhander by Ramswick. And the save made. Rebound shot wide. And it's loose to the near boards as Burnsville setting it up. Good pressure here on the wing. Luckraff behind the net to Ramswick. Back past the stick of Luckraff. And it's knocked down. And here's Palava. Palava moving it up ice. Palava going in over the blue line. He's got a trailer. That's Meyer. Palava trying to get off his shot, and Burnsville clears it. And they move it back down to the Bemidji zone, and striding back over to pick it up is Smith. This is Smith now for the Lumberjacks on the lead pass intended for Meyer. Meyer trying to chase it down, but beating him to it was Franco. And the Burnsville back in their own net. 12-14 remaining in the second period. We have a 1-1 game here at the St. Paul Civic Center. Hammond with it, chasing it in over the line. Played back down in behind Peters. And quickly around to Lynn. Lynn with the puck, trying to bring it out, trying to get some help there from Baker. And back goes Smith. And Smith whips it around the boards to Smith. Coming over is Meyer to try and help out. Lynn at center ice, trying to chase it down. And going back is Reichel. Reichel in behind his own net. The Braves will regroup and starting out is Hammond. Hammond on the lead to center ice to the line of Bemidji and over the line, Featherstone. Featherstone chasing it down. They have a man in the slot that is traveling. Can't get him the puck. And it's turned away by Smith. Smith back up ice with Nevitt now and Lind out as the line. Shot in on Gorg. Steered it to his left side with 11.24 remaining. At Burnsville catching up with the puck and playing it down to the left wing corner. That was Featherstone going back quickly as Fawson. And now on the breakout, it comes right wing to Nevitt. His pass is broken up at center ice. And Burnsville will play it back in over the line as Ramswick got control of the puck. Whistle play stopped at the blue line. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Unfortunately, they're forecasting low temperatures. Fortunately, People Express is forecasting low prices to eight Florida cities. 11 minutes and 7 seconds remaining here in the second period. 1-1 the score. You don't know a name that we haven't mentioned a lot in this game is Luckrap. 
Well, we did in the corner just uh, previously when he used his body very effectively, but he's a big, strong defenseman. And we need someone that burns will defend on an all tight situation because he's very solid back there. Boston with the puck in the clearing pass to Sauer, moving it up the far wing. Sauer rinked wide over to Getter, played away from his stick. Knocked down and it was held in by Osmondson. Played back over to center ice. Coming back, here's Finnegan in over the line. Finnegan with a drive and a goal. As Herm Finnegan gets his first goal of the tournament and Burnsville leads it 2-1. Well, Finnegan coming down the left side, he used his line mate Burrell as a decoy. Boston moving over just to slightly put that pass away. You'll see right here, Finnegan looks to Burrell. He sees he can't pass it to him, so he just lets fly with a shot. It catches Peters on the glove. Peters couldn't handle it, and the rebound or the deflection off his glove ends up in the net. There's the shot right there by Finnegan as Boston was trying to protect the pass across to Burrell. So Finnegan very wisely just lets fly with the shot. Never wrong to take the shot when you're going two on one if you can get a shot on that. That's what happens. Peter's not able to get all of it. A good hard shot by Finnegan puts Burnsville up two to one. And we have 10 minutes, 41 seconds remaining in the second period. Are we in for another close one? Maybe. How about another overtime game, Lou? Well, I think it's uh, a little late. Let's settle for a regular, a regular time in this game. And it goes back in the net now. The Braves will set it up to try and bring it out of the far wing intended for Ferreira. He has the other goal for Burnsville. That is Osiki. Angling off the boards and it's held in. Breaking to the net, trying to go off on the pass with Sauer. Turned away by the Braves. Moving it up ice. Here's Granada with over the line. Out with his line mates of Bloom and of Ferreira. But uh, it's cleared back in uh, the brave zone and striding back over to set it up now. As Burnsville uh, out in front here by one goal. Two to one at the 10.04 mark of uh, the second period. Bemidji, 22 and one on the year. And it's played back by Palava. Back of the net going Osiki to pick it up. Here's Osiki on the breakout, intercepted by Johnson. Too many men. Out on the ice, and that comes up at the 9.51 mark of the second period. Bemidji getting caught with too many men as Scott Johnson was coming off the ice and played the puck. And the score is 2-1. to one. This is Hockey 85 live from the St. Paul Civic Center. Time you heard about your loan, right? Right. Well, any time now, that other bank, the slow one, will let you know if you have money or not. Or not? How long has it been? A week? A week? You know, at TCF, you get a yes or a no on an installment loan in just eight hours. Eight or hours? Or we'll give you $25. $25? Call TCF first. I am calling. Our express loan service is smart banking. TCF is smart banking. For all the times of your life. Rob Sauer will serve the penalty for too many men on the ice for Bemidji and Burnsville getting their first opportunity in the power play, a chance to expand their lead. They're now leading 2-1. to one. And it was Finnegan at the 419 mark, giving him a 2-1 to one lead. Finnegan had one goal and one assist in last year's tournament. Back in over the line, drop pass, setting it up to the point. And coming over is Hammond trying to go to the high slot. And it was cleared by Palava. Here's Palava with a drive, and it's ducked down to the rebound. Backhanded out by Trichel. Out of Burnsville, back in a hurry to the blue line of Bemidji, taken away there. And this is Smith rushing the puck. Smith with it, going left wing in the pass. Intended for Sauer, but an offside will be called. That's defenseman Bob Smith rushing the puck up ice. Even though Bemidji has got a man disadvantage at this time, look for them to take any break they can, especially that boy right there who handles the puck so well. He, as we said earlier, had the most assist on the hockey club. He likes to handle that puck. He likes to rush with it. One thing you've got to watch, however, is getting caught up with one defensive back alone. That's what happened on the second goal. Lundgren was able to turn Finnegan away. And Finnegan went down using Varela as a decoy and put Burnsville up ahead. Bemidji's starting to get caught two to one three to two situations more than they had the first period and burnsville has the man advantage here 128 remaining on the penalty time for too many men on the ice luck wrapped around over to schrader schrader with it on the near wing in the pass out to burrell burrell tied up by johnson but he did set it up now to the left wing it's ramswick and over the line off right wing in the pass intended for finnegan Played back to the point, and it comes out of the zone, and Ramswick back to set it up. 
8.57 remaining. Back in over the line. Here's Ramsvik off in the far wing on the pass to the point. Cross side is shot by Burrell. Went wide. Knocked down. Peters is down. Looking at it. With Burrell whistling and play with this Peters was down. Usually when the pass is coming across like that, you like to fire off the pass. But the pass coming to John Burrell, to Peters' right, was a little ahead of him. He's on the forehand side, and he should have actually stopped that. He had plenty of time to play that pass. He could have stopped it as he was doing that. Peters was moving across the goal. He would have had a pretty good shot for the upper corner, but he attempted to just try and shoot off the pass, as you usually do, and the pass being bad, he didn't have a very good opportunity to score a goal. Okay, Lou, 56 seconds remaining in the penalty time. 8.45 remaining in the period. And the Burnsville leading it 2-1 to one here. Burnsville averaging almost six goals per game so far this season. And it's set up by Burrell. Back to the point. Schrader with a drive, and that's why. Rebound to Burrell. Burrell in the slot. Shot and a goal. Burrell setting it up beautifully to the man in the slot. And I believe it's Finnegan. Well, the key play was made by Kelly Ranzik in front of the net. You, you get the opportunity. Watch number 10 on Burnsville. Take out number 10 on Bemidji as the pass is coming across. We see the pass coming from Burrell on the right side, right here, nine. Watch now, number 10, go and take out 10, right there. See that? He stopped Smith from getting the pass, and Finnegan was able to fire off Burrell's pass right into the net. What a good play by Kelly Ramsey. He won't go down in the scoring summary, but he made the key play right there. 6.24, the time of the goal, second of the night, second of the tournament for Finnegan. And a three to one game right now. As Bemidji trying to regroup, Nevin in over the line, cleared from his stick. Knocked down and moved back up ice, coming back in over the line. Trying to set it up, Bloom with it on the left wing. Bloom is out with Granado and uh, Ferreira. Laid down in the corner on the left side. One assist, give it on the goal that to Burrell. And it's set up now at center ice on the near boards with it is Schulze. Get over the line, trying to go right side on the pass, turned away by Jeff Nevitt. Here's Nevitt back, get over the line for Bemidji on the far wing, trying to go off his shot and a goal! It's scored by David Smith! David Smith taking that pass from Nevitt as he's moving away across the net. He just let fly, let that fly in stride. He didn't get a great deal on it, but just the fact that he was able to shoot while he was moving across the front of the net, keep the handcuff Gord, and Paul Bemidji was in one. Watch this play right now. David Smith moving away from the net, and he just shoots as he's moving across. Maybe that puck, even when you look at it, might have hit the defenseman, Osiki, in the stick and dropped down. Or Gore could have even been screened, but Smith moving away from the net is able to beat Gore. And now Bemidji cuts the lead to one. And a three to two game with 8.02 remaining in the second period. And Lou, you have to be impressed with Bemidji, the fact that uh, they have battled Burnsville here. Oh, and they keep bouncing back. They, they've got the explosiveness up front. If they get the opportunity, they'll score goals. What they've got to watch is giving up too many chances. And Osiki coming cross ice to Schulze. Schulze with the puck now, will bring it out of his own zone to center ice to Granato, breaking through, and he was tied up, and we have got uh, a whistle and a stoppage of play. There'll be a break in the action, and we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Whether you're making a business call, an emergency call... In the action with a glove save, drawing the face off to his left side. Three to two to score. 7.47 remaining in the second period here. And uh, Bemidji now will set it up in a hurry. This is Sauer. Sauer in over the blue line, right wing to Yetter. Yetter chasing it down to the corner, back in behind the net goes Sauer and Johnson. But the Burnsville Braves bring it out to center ice to travel it. Travel it with the puck at the blue line. Taken away by Johnson, angled back out to center ice. Broken up by Hammond. Hammond will rim it around the boards, and it's knocked down by Peters behind the net. 7-18 remaining in the second period. 3-2 the score. Off on the far wing, setting it up, trying to get something going is Baker. And the Braves set it up, moving to the left side of the net. And it's centered right out in front as they try to go on the pass to Featherstone. Take it away by Johnson. Johnson flips it down to the corner of the near side. Traveling with the puck. Centered right out in front. All alone, a backhander, and it hit the pipe. Shot the rebound and a goal. 
I think that was traveling, getting the rebound off Bevins' goal's backhand shot that came off the pipe. He came out from the corner behind the goaltender. The puck had hit the pipe. It is traveling number 22 who puts that away after Featherstone seemingly had Peter's beat only to have the puck bounce off the pipe at three. Here you see the backhand shot by Featherstone up off the pipe and traveling coming through the crease. Number 22, or Branson I should say, puts that away, putting Burnsville ahead. Scott Branson giving Burnsville a four to two lead, getting that rebound off the pipe. Got to watch this Burnsville hockey team. They get around that net. They go for the net at all times. You see how the yeah. puck hit the pipe and then it came off and hit the goal stick of Peters and landed behind him. Just one of those spooky things that happened, but Branson capitalized. Because they were right there. Huh? They go for the net continually. And we have 6.52 remaining here in the second period. One assist was given on the goal. And that uh, to Featherstone. So we have a four to two game now and it's set up along the near boards angling it ahead at center ice knocking it down played back by Wernus in over the line. Wernus uh, playing it back of the net now as Bemidji will regroup back of the net goes Fawson. This is Fawson whistle and we have an interference call and with the score four to two this is hockey 85 live from the St. Paul Civic Center. Drudgery was a way of life for our ancestors. But today, even lawn work is easier because Snapper has the key to quick starts. Electric ignition, the sign of today's most advanced machine. It even has an alternator, like your car, and a powerful high vacuum system. Snapper electric starter makes mowing a snap. Receive a free work-saving attachment during Snapper Super Value Day. See Chuck at Northern Hydraulics in Burnsville or Mark at Swingers Hardware in New Brighton. Watch number seven in the lower left of your screen throwing a pretty hefty elbow, actually, right there. He gets called for any interference, but it was a pretty good elbow that he put into uh, Mike Traveling of Burnsville. So Burnsville now going on the power play. And they have scored a power play goal in this game, and it was one of two by Finnegan. There's Luckraft shot. And it's deflected back over to Schrader at the right point. Flipped back down in the corner on the near side. Just underway on the power play situation. 149 remaining in the man advantage. Schrader with it. At the point on the far boards, back in behind the net to Ramswick. Ramswick trying to go off to Burrell, back to the point to Luckraff. Tried to play it toward the net, dug out by Finnegan down to the corner. Off to Ramswick, and he comes cross ice intended for Burrell. And it's cleared out by Meyer. Here is Meyer for Bemidji, one against three, and over the line, and it's cleared by Schrader. And he quickly gives it to Luckraff. Luckraff, head up, passing it up ice now. Birdsville with a man advantage, three on two, and over the line. And it's set up, and a shot tipped, knocked down, and it was cleared behind the net by Fawson. Fawson with the puck turned and trying to bring it out, and advancement of the puck there with a hand at the point. And I would call that advancement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's pretty lucky he didn't get a penalty for closing his hand on the puck, and, uh, you know, delay a game, you could actually call him right there. You he bet. threw it ahead. <laughs> he's very happy to just take a face off on that play. We have had three minor penalties called in this hockey game. And one against Burnsville and two against Bemidji. We have 541 remaining in the second period. Four to two the score. The Burnsville Braves out in front. On the far wing, set up by Smith, turned and slid it down to the far wing corner. And the back wing uh, over to set it up now. Osiki with some help. As the breakout comes up the far wing intended for Bloom. Checked away from his stick, chasing it down is Johnson. Johnson has got a man, a sour move into the slot, played it right out in front, and the passing combination didn't work. Bloom back the other way. Here's Bloom now, and over the line. Here's Bloom, whistle, and an upside is going to be called. Still 40 seconds remaining on the man advantage. If Bermidji's alert uh, tonight, they're going to pick off one of those passes that Burnsville has been trying all night long. They, they go against the flow just automatically. As someone's chasing him behind the net, they're just laying the puck back to the defenseman going the opposite way. And one of these times it's going to be picked off and someone's going to be all alone in front. They like to do that. They do that a great deal. And they pulled it on Bemidji about five times here tonight. And it's set up now with the man advantage. Uh, Birdsville still having 33 seconds remaining here in which to operate. I got down to the corner trying to set something up. Whistle and play will be stopped. 
What do you remember as your biggest goal, Lou Nanny, in college at Minnesota? Did you have one that stood out in your mind? I can't remember if I had a goal, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, you led the league in scoring one year. Well, I, I uh, was fortunate enough to, uh, I got the winning goal against Montreal in the semifinals. The first time that uh, an expansion team ever beat an established team in the Stanley Cup. I guess that's the big as I can That's remember. the big one, huh? Well, you don't get too many, they're easy to remember. <laughs> Five minutes and two seconds remaining in the second period. 28 seconds remaining at a penalty time on the call of interference, which was against Osmondson. That advantage for the Burnsville Braves. And back in behind the net, it's Granado. Granado setting it up. Shot knocked down. Peters with a nice save there as uh, it goes up over the glass and out of play in the near boards. Well, it's a real good save by Peters, and he was fortunate that that rebound went wider than that because standing on the doorstep was Ferrara just waiting to pounce on it. He's been there twice. He tried a shot from the short side before, couldn't beat Peters, but that time the pass across almost went right to him. And a backhander up over the glass off the stick of Bloom. The line of Bloom, Granado, and Ferrara is a pretty good line, isn't it? Don Granado's brother plays, as you well know, at Wisconsin, a very fine hockey player at the University of Wisconsin. He's from Chicago. Moved into Burnsville this season, and he's quite a, an effective hockey player. And with fellows like Ferrara and Scott Bloom, Bloom one of the bigger, stronger wings in the state. They've been very effective for Burnsville all year long. And there's another Granado was the was on the team first alternate here. If something would have happened going into the tournament field, knocking it down on uh, the near wing now and back at full strength. Bemidji here back at full strength, and Burnsville will go back in their own zone to set it up. Well, that is Hammond working behind the net as Bemidji is down to buy a couple of goals, but they try to get something going on the near wing here. Facing it down is Palava. Palava moved it right out in front, clear. Left side, back the other way. Coming up ice here is Traveling. Right over the line, Traveling went down. And back, uh, setting it up here is Palava. Palava trying to pass it off over to Smith, take it away. And back to Traveling to the blue line and whistle, and play will be stopped. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back for the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. In Viking Land, performance like this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, can only be found in one place. Your Viking Land Dodge dealer. Four minutes and two seconds remaining in the second period. It's a 4-2 game. Burnsville is out in front. Now the Burnsville rated by many as uh, the free tournament favorite here coming into this one. But from the action that we've seen in game one, there's a lot of other teams that don't believe that. Now to move to get up ice, here's a potential break. Striding down is Werner. Peters out of the net. Werner tried to center it, and it was cleared by Nevin. And it was held in along the far boards. Coming over to help out is Larson chasing it down. Peters a little dangerous that time in his motion. And coming up ice, here's Lind. Lind in the center zone. Coming in over the blue line of the right side. Drop pass to Smith. Moved out in front. Shot deflected up over the glass. And out of play. Well, Smith just had that shot deflected by Oseki as he moves to his forehand. And looked like he was going to be right on Gord's doorstep, but that puck was deflected over the glass. If we look at Byron Grant. Brian was really a fine hockey player in his own right from Rozo, played at Bemidji State, where he was quite a hockey player at Bemidji State also. Very tricky, very clever with that puck. Played in four consecutive state tournaments for Rozo back in 63 and 66. So he knows what it's like to be uh, here in the Twin Cities. Very talented hockey player. And the faceoff coming up to the left side in a 42 game and going back and to set it up now. As at the point of the far wing, Birdsville setting it up, moving up ice in a hurry. Coming to get over the line, trying to pick it up was Burrell. Burrell dropping a pass, which Johnson tried to take away. Coming along the near wing, setting it up. Here's Sauer. Sauer with it. Back to Yetter. Yetter is tied up by Ramswick. And the puck loose in the corner. Burrell is there. Whistle. And play will be stopped. Pardon me. Well, both Burrell and Ramswick putting a little fort checking pressure on big number seven, Scott Osmondson. We look at an interested fan here. Lou, are you surprised this game has not been a little more physical? No, I, I think we're seeing quite a bit of hitting as uh, the game goes on right now. It's just that both teams have got good balance. They're taking the checks very well. They're able to ride checks off. Many times you see good body checks and they're only noticed as people fall, but 
There are quite a few times out there tonight where people have had a heavy check laid on them, but they've absorbed the check and been able to continue. And back to the point on the near side. Here's Luckcraft, and he takes aim and he fires it. Knocked down a rebound and a shot, and the save was made. Finnegan right out in front, pushed wide of the rebound. Got it set up down to the corner. And Burrell back to the point over to Schrader with a drive, and Peters the save. Finnegan had two occasions <laughs> in this period when he could have had that hat trick. And he's not going to get any better ones when he had the rebound from Lutcraft stick right there at the doorstep. Peters down. He's all alone. He just couldn't put it away. Sure moves the puck well, don't they? They do. They know uh, their position. They know enough to move it back to the point. When everything gets congested in front of the net and the points are left open, they know enough to give it back to the point and hopefully get a shot through that screen or at least get a rebound on the door when there's confusion raining around the goaltender. 237 or a minute in the second period. 4-2 to two the score. Burnsville is out in front off the face off the shot. Ferreira took it and the save by Peter. Hey, that, that was a clean draw. <laughs> run right back to Ferreira and you've got to be alert as a goaltender and Peters was because he shoots right off the pass. Look at Ferreira. The puck's still rolling. He gets it. And he just lets it go. And when that puck's rolling, it plays tricks on that goaltender. But Peters hung right with him and made the save. And Bemidji looks to bring it out of the zone. And coming back over is Bob Smith. Uh, Smith at 205 pounds of 5'10", a very solid young man. And uh, he's not afraid to use his body, is he? Oh, he uses it, uses it very well. In the first period, there was quite a collision between him and Bloom. Neither one went down. And they both, you know, knew that the other had hit him. They both absorbed the pretty heavy check. Both teams at equal strength, 223, remaining here in the second period. And it comes back along the near wing as now the uh, Lumberjacks will regroup and start out on the far side. Sauer moves it to the center zone. And of Burnsville back over to set it up now. And over skating the puck. And with it is Palava. Here's Palava on the trailer. Meyer moving it in, trying to go back to Palava with a backhander. Palava is down, and Burnsville will clear it. Up ice in the far side with it is Bloom. And over the line, a potential break. Moving it in. Shot saved by Peters. As he stoned the moving in on the right wing, Ferreira. That whistle and play will be stopped in the corner. That was a great pass by Scott Bloom. You have to say he's a good pool player. He banked it just perfectly to Ferreira breaking behind the defenseman. Ferreira breaking it all alone, trying to put a move to get Peters across the net. But Peters stayed right with the puck. He kept his eyes on the puck. Didn't leave that pipe until the puck was coming to him and made the save. Is the goaltending what you expected on the part of both teams? Well, really, Gork hasn't been tested that much, and Peters is a quality goaltender. He had many occasions to come up with a difficult save, and he's made a lot of them. Schultze to travel and turned and fired it wide. Back over to Schultze down to the corner, trying to go to Featherstone. Now with 1.30 remaining here in the second period. Will we get up ice now? Coming back in over the blue line is Smith. Nevitt is trailing him. Smith with the puck. Working behind the net. Down goes uh, Smith as he's high up. 118 for betting. And uh, David Smith working behind the net as Burnsville will try to regroup along the near boards. And it comes up ice and it's clear. Back in the zone of the Lumberjacks as they will stride back and set it up now and start out. With one minute remaining here in the one second minute period, minute. it is a 4 to 2 game. But it is Lynn. Lynn trying to move past the check of Branson. Lynn in over the line, take it away there, knocked down Featherstone, playing it back in over the blue line of uh, Bemidji, coming back over to set it up, Osmondson on the breakout, that's taken away by Trichel going cross ice, down to play uh, down in on Peters, whipped around the boards by Osmondson, trying to bring it out of the zone, Lynn with it, sliding it ahead, one against two, move it up ice in over the line, it's Sauer, Sauer trying to move past Raider with a shot, and Gord with the save, play behind the bat, and whistle and play will be stopped. Sauer's got great ability to move to the outside at full speed. It's pretty difficult to cut from your left. He can go outside and turn the burners on, and quite a few times he's been able to get himself in position, position for a shot. As we look at Coach Tom Mosek, he's got to be pretty impressed with the way his defensemen though are handling the speed of Sauer and Johnson, keeping him on the outside, not really giving too many chances to Bemidji to score on court. Third straight trip to the state tournament for Burnsville. Bemidji is in their fifth trip to the tournament the last one being in 1976 and uh, it's set up now as Burnsville will bring it back out of their own zone in a 4-2 game and with it is Finnegan in over the line right side over to Luckcraft and they have a man in the slot trying to go off to Burrell on the pass backhanded to the point where it's held in a shot there by Ramsvik 
And whistle and play will be stopped with eight seconds remaining here in the period. Uh, mentioned uh, last time that Bemidji was here with 76. They were runner-up to Edina East uh, in 74 as well. Edina that time completing the year as an undefeated school. Well, Bemidji's turned out some real good hockey players out there over the years, but the outstanding one has got to be Gary Sargent, one of the more talented defensemen to play in the National League during the 70s. Unfortunately, his career was ended with an injury, but he had great skills. And the faceoff will come up to the right side of Steve Peters. And the draw set up along the near boards, and uh, moving it up by Sears Boston. Boston rolling it down in as Gord not letting it go, and we've come to the end of the second period of play. And after that period of time, it is uh, Burnsville leading in this hockey game over Bemidji by a score of 4-2. to two. Well, Burnsville has really been putting on a great deal of pressure on Bemidji to score. It doesn't indicate the real good scoring chances that Burnsville has. Peters has had to make many more difficult saves than Gord, and it looks like the strength of Burnsville is starting to have a telling effect on Bemidji. Bemidji really not getting any opportunities in the last seven or eight minutes of that period. Okay, we know it's late, but there's only one more period to go, and it's four to two after two, and let's go down uh, now to sports control. All right, Paul and Louie, it was tied 1-1 after one, and now it's 4-2, Burnsville uh, leading Bemidji, and of course, uh, as, as the two mentioned, uh, Bemidji really, the pressure was applied on the Lumberjacks, and had it not been for Steve Peters, why uh, Bemidji could be out of it at this point, Tom. I think it's interesting, uh, before this tournament started, Tom Osiki was asked what weakness uh, Burnsville had. He stepped back, thought a moment, he said, I really don't think Burnsville has a weakness. We do not have one at all, and it appears that way right now. They are a very talented team. They came through that uh, cu a tough Lake Conference South uh, with only one loss, uh, an excellent season. Well, let's go down to the ice again. Here's Tony Parker. Well, Ralph, we're actually not on the ice. As you can see, I have joined the band. And uh, I've got to make a confession. I have always wanted to be in the band. I never play an instrument. And my favorite is the saxophone. Your name, young man? Michael O'Hanlon. Michael, you're playing what kind of a saxophone? Tenor saxophone. Let me hear you play it. Just something, you know, real. Isn't that marvelous? Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. That wasn't very loud. You try it on the trumpet. Isn't that terrific? I wish I could do that. Let's see if the mice go can take a cue. in the morning plenty of energy tony as well go big blue well the big blue is going to have to get going in the third period that's bemidji they're trailing uh burnsville four to two after two and this is continuing coverage of the 1985 minnesota state high school hockey tournament when you're a senior you're expected to think about some deep subjects the meaning of life money money well that's where tcf can help with low-interest student loans for college or for tech. Pass card checking is free with a low minimum. And say cramming for finals and midnight and you need a pizza. Well, there's always a TCF cash machine near campus. That's smart banking. TCF is smart banking. For all the times of your life. The revolution began with Dodge Caravan and Dodge Daytona. And now another presence is about to be felt. It's the key to a new driving force, one that lets you set your sights even higher. Dodge Lancer. Its fuel-injected engine has a turbocharger option that'll make your heart race. So when a Lancer makes its presence known, everybody takes notice. Get the key that unlocks all the performance of the revolutionary Lancer. We know what it's like in business. It's Saturday. Get to Omaha! Go sit at your boss! Get to Omaha! It's my birthday. Happy birthday! Get to Omaha! Thank you. Republic Airlines thinks you deserve... Perks. Perks? Your own section. Business first. A front. With wide first-class seats and a lot of other perks. Only on Republic. Perks. Perks. 
After two periods, our score, Burnsville 4, Bemidji 2, and certainly the second period, Ralph, uh, was pretty much... Uh, 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 Burnsville really did take it to them, yeah. 3-1, they, <laughs> no they outscored them in that period. Let's look at the highlights from uh, the second period. Herm Finnegan started things off, gave Burnsville a 2-1 lead on a power play right there. Whips into the lane in the B Bemidji zone. Let's go a shot, and uh, it really went off the, uh, glo the glove hand of Steve Peters. Burnsville, 3-1, number nine, John Burrell with a pass. And uh, Kelly Ramzik took his man out. Herm Finnegan had scored there. And uh, back comes Bemidji. That's right, David Smith with the goal right there. He pulls Bemidji back 3-2 to two with this shot from the core of the circle that beat Kevin Gord. And number 22, Scott Branson scored for Burnsville. Uh, and that was a goal. Number 11, uh, Kevin Featherstone uh, hit the crossbar right there on the backhand. But then Scott Branson was right there in the crease to, uh, to make the 4-2 to two for Burnsville over Bemidji. Another look at it. There's the backhand hitting the crossbar off the goaltender and into the net, 4-2. to two. So uh, the uh, Burnsville Braves leading Bemidji after two periods, 4-2. And uh, we'll continue in just a moment. This is continuing coverage of the 1985 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Saves are usually a pretty good barometer of the domination of one team over the over the other, and that certainly was the case in the second period of our game right now. In that second period, Bemidji goaltender Steve Peters made 17 saves, while Kevin Gorg only had to stop five pucks. Wow, we're just about set for the third period, Tom. We're going back upstairs uh, to Paul and Lou. Lou, if you need a new uh, goal judge out there instead of uh, Murray Whipple, I can be bought off. I've Turn already that told red light Murray. on. That's right. I've told Murray, put that light on more often than you're putting it on for us. <laughs> okay. How do you like that? He, they said, he says, I'm neutral. I said, if I want a neutral goal judge, I'll go to Toronto. <laughs> How do you like that? They're showing all those goals against the North Stars. No, they weren't. That was uh -huh. behind Buffalo when I was here watching. There well, were two of them in Buffalo. You were watching, too. right? But anyway, talking about this game, a lot of people are leaving the building here, but uh, we're going to finish it out and right now, 4-2. to two. Well, Burnsville was in complete control that period. They seem to be just getting more dominant as the game goes on. We knew that they were a big, strong, powerful club, and at this time, they're starting to really excel. They've had a, quite a few opportunities, and the only reason why the score is still 4-2 is because of the goaltender of Steve Peters. He was tested far and away more than Kevin Gorg, and the chances that Burnsville had, there were quite a few that were right from the doorstep where he had to make some good saves. I know Finnegan alone should have four or five goals, but he wasn't able to capitalize on it. Burnsville's going to continue to put on pressure, I believe, because they they played that way all year long. They they are a solid hockey club. They're a team that works very hard, and they're, they're deep at all positions. And I think they're going to they're be tough to beat here tonight. They're going to be tough to beat as the tournament goes on. Do you see any weakness at all, Lou? In uh, Burnsville? Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't seen his goaltender really tr tested that much throughout the season because their defense, they're big and strong, and they keep you away from the net. They block shots. They make sure the puck's not around. I, if anything, I don't think their defensemen move the puck as uh, smoothly or as quickly as, uh, you know, maybe they're capable of doing, and that's because they're just taught to play defensive hockey. They're big and strong, and, and they've got the good forwards to handle the puck all, uh, all night long. So... If anything, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have to move that puck quicker if they get under a strong forecheck. Are you all right now? Are you going to be able to make this period here? Well, we only got one to go, <laughs> I think. I don't think you're going to see overtime here, Paul. And it's 4-2 to two as we get underway in uh, the third period here at the St. Paul Civic Center. And uh, Bemidji needing a couple of goals to tie up this hockey game, and they move it out to center ice. Coming back in over the blue line on the left side with it is Smith. Smith trying to work his way to the net. Schrader tied him up. And the, the puck is loose along the near boards. Bringing it back out is Burrell. Burrell in the lead pass trying to go off over to Finnegan. Finnegan trying to move in toward the net. And Peters made the save. And Lou, it is a little different to look around this building and thinking about the caliber of this game and how everybody was looking forward to it and see all the empty seats. But I guess at 1235, in a long day, some people have had enough. Well, even a Burnsville bus was just called and would be leaving in 10 minutes. So uh, when your means of transportation is going, you've got to go. And a lot of people apparently have come with buses and they've already left the building. And the face-off, the draw to Schrader at the point, And uh, Schrader playing it around the board. Both teams here at equal strength. 14-24 remaining. Schrader with it. Played it back to the net again. And Peters gloved it there and stopped the action. Burnsville using those points. And once they get the puck back to the point, the wings are very alert. 
alert enough to go for the net. The defensemen just want to put that puck on the net. They're missing the short side, but the Burnsville forwards are right there, and Peters has got to make those uh, stoppages in play. Otherwise, that puck would be nine three or on the creek. And off on the far side now, both teams at equal strength. Ramswick with it, had to take it off his stick. Back in over the line is Johnson. Whistle and play will be stopped on the offside call. Well, Johnson just trying to come across the blue line was just checked long enough that he went across the blue line before he had control of the puck, and then he reached back, pulled it across, causing the offside. And it'll come up at the blue line, the face-off, uh, just outside the Burnsville Brave zone. 14 minutes, 8 seconds remaining. Johnson is out now with Yadarin Sauer. And it's played by Osiki as he goes back to that. Osiki along with uh, Schulze. Schulze on the near side, uh, down on his knees, trying to pedal it out on right wing to Ferreira. Knocked down in the neutral zone. Coming back over to set it up and controlling it is Fawson. Fawson the moving past Granado. And Fawson looking for the puck, and he plays it up the near wing. Johnson taking a look. And it goes back in behind Gord, hustling back. There's that reverse again. They've done it twice in a row, and pretty soon Bemidji's going to pick that off. Those defensemen are using it every time, Paul. And you think right now Bemidji should be alert and aware of that. As soon as that defenseman's going towards the corner, he just stops and wheels it right back to the other defenseman against the floor. And they've been doing that all night long. I'm sure if Jefferson or Minnetonka are looking, someone could take advantage of that tomorrow if they continue to do it. 13-33 remaining here in the third period. 4-2 to the score. It was 1-1 one, one after 1. And now 4-2 here as we start the third period. And both teams at full strength as uh, the Braves will go back behind the net. Osiki. Osiki with it now. Trying to lead it out to center ice. Intended for Granado. Striding down to the corner. And Smith there. And Granado back to the net. Trying to pick up the puck. But it's cleared out over to center ice. Knocking it down. Osiki. Trying to head him at it, pushed back in the zone. Whistle and play will be stopped at the blue line. And there's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Join Christian Brothers Great Stick Shift, the only aluminum stick approved by the NHL. Christian's revolutionary aluminum shaft hockey stick is lighter than wood. This stick is quick. The Christian Brothers Aluminum Hockey Stick. Well, Bemidji trying to get at least an opportunity to score a goal to get back in this game. They're trailing by two. They know the clock's running down, but those Burnsville defensemen still playing very solidly back there, just moving the puck out of the zone, not allowing them any opportunity. And it's picked up, and uh, Palava played it back in behind the net. And uh, Burnsville, the Braves regroup on the near boards, turning, trying to bring it out. And the moving it up ice, controlling it was Streichel in over the line, trying to go to Travelin. Travelin back over to Featherstone. And it's picked up by Palava on the near boards. Palava will try to work it out of the zone as he gets some help. And with it is Smith. Smith carries it in over the line, trying to go to the high slot, and it was cleared away. And back comes Hammond up the far boards, and he'll dump it down to the corner. Going back is Randy Roberts working behind the net. Comes out uh, on the wing in the pass, trying to get help to bring it out. Featherstone holding the zone with 12 minutes, 29 seconds remaining. Back of the net goes Fossen. Fossen with the puck coming out in front of Peters. Fossen will move it out of his own zone. And we show 12 minutes, 19 seconds remaining. Carries it all the way in the zone and fired it wide. Comes around the boards, down in the corner, over to try and pick it up. And the Burnsville Braves with Hammond on the near wing. Knocking it down there, trying to pick it up with Nevitt. Here's Nevitt with the puck, taken away by Featherstone. Backhand to get in over the line, and it's chased down by Burrell in the corner. Trying to go back to Ramswick on the pass, taken away by Lynn, trying to break it out. Held in by Luckcraft, and taken away by Nevitt. Here's Nevitt one-on-one -on -one coming in over the blue line, and Burnsville will go back in the near boards, and they'll start out. Moving it up ice in a hurry. Coming in over the line, uh, moving the puck is Finnegan. He's got a couple of goals. Over to Ramswick with a shot deflected from Luckraft. Plays it down in the corner on the near side. 11 minutes, 33 seconds remaining. Moving right out in front. Shot fired wide by Finnegan. Around of the far boards over to Smith. Turn brought back out over to center right. As uh, Burnsville uh, tying up the man there was Osmondson. And uh, Bemidji will set it up on the near wing as they come back up ice. Out of with it is Smith. Taken away by Schrader. Schrader tried to hit the man on the lead, but Lynn played it back down in. And a whistle and play will be stopped. And there's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament.
Now, your Chrysler Plymouth dealer has 8.8 .8 annual percentage rate financing on Laser Horizon and Duster. Plus, ask about our special offer on Reliance. Thank you, America, for our best year ever. 11 minutes and 9 seconds remaining in uh, the third period, 4 to 2. Birchville is out in front of the game here. Lusicki with the puck, angling it off the boards. And it's chased down by Granado. Granado moving in, and he fanned on the shot and then tried to retrieve it and went behind the net. Coming back along the near wing as Bemidji will set it up to bring it out of the zone. Sauer with it. Hit over the line, and Falava across ice as Bemidji now down only by two goals. Trying to move it in the high slot, and moving it in. Shot knocked down, and Gorg with the save after the shot by Johnson in the corner. Back over on the wing, and it's set up. Whistle and play will be stopped in the corner in the Burnsville zone. And that was Gorg's toughest save. He was all alone, left right there with Scott Johnson. Johnson having the puck right in front of him, make the shot. But Gord makes the save, and really the only uh, reason that happened right now, Burnsville's getting a little antsy, and one of their defensemen came running across the ice. He first came to the left side, then all the way across to the right side, leaving the front of the net open rather than just plain balance, being in the position as they were doing earlier. They're getting a little antsy now. They want to take the body a little bit more, and when you leave your position with quick people like Johnson and Don Sauer out there, you're going to give up some opportunity. And the draw is set up by Hammond Angle to get around the boards, trying to go to travel it, but laid back over to Trichel. Trichel working behind the net now, trying and did give it to Featherstone. Up ice to travel it. Back in over the line. Here's Branson to move again. Shot missed the corner of the net. Branson with the puck down to the corner and waiting for it. Uh, at the point was Hammond. They couldn't get it to him. And it's played by Bemidji. Back out of it to center ice and then shot back in the zone. But an offside will be called at the blue line. Well, Branson had a good chance right there as he's breaking in on the right side. Fortunately for him, the puck was just slowed down enough by Boston's stick that he was able to skate right into it, but Peter stood his ground, made the save. Otherwise, Bemidji could have put this game away. Because if you get down to three goals for Bemidji with 10 minutes to go, you, you've got really a tough road to hold. Your chances aren't very good that you're going to beat this club. Bemidji has scored an average of 5.5 goals per game and have allowed under two goals but they've given up four here in this one and it's played uh, it over the line chasing it in moving it a shot kicked out by peters after the larson shot played back of the net now going over to try and set it up Werner's tried to move it in a backhander fired by larson back off on the wing and the far board set up now on towards center ice coming over to try and pick it up and we have 948 remaining here whistle play uh, blown dead at the blue line of Burnsville on the offside call. Well, George Palava, he came across the blue line. He thought he was going to be checked right there by Steve Schultz or Scott Schultz and knocked him down. Palava, big, strong wing, the leading scorer for Bemidji, uses his weight very effectively. Pretty tough to bring down. He's taking quite a few strong checks tonight. Tough to knock off balance. 6'3", 215 pound junior with 37 points in the season. And we have nine minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Moving it up ice, controlling it now. Coming in over the line is Larson. Over to Michau. Shot to go by Michau. What a play by Mike. Pardon me. What a play by Mike Michau. Boy, he came across the right side. He made a little move on the defense and got himself in all alone. And he had to put that puck right upstairs, and he did it with a quick wrist shot to beat Steve Peter. That's the depth of this Burnsville hockey team. Here's Michau stepping on the inside around the defense, but gets him flat-footed. As he walks around Osmond, and then he puts that right upstairs on Peters. Puts Burnsville up 5-2. to two. And the fourth line of Burnsville just comes right out here and scores the goal. Allowing Coach Tom Osiki to rest the others. He's not afraid to use this line. They're a very solid hockey club with a great depth. And it's shown right here by the quick move by Mike Mishu. And look at that shot right upstairs underneath the puck. And it is now a 5-2 to two game. The goal at the 527 mark of the period. And one assist was given on the goal, and that going to uh, Larson, number 16. And it's played back down in the corner now. Peters knocking it down, going behind the net for Fawson. And ooh, there's a heavy check, which may have caused an injury. And with the score, 5-2, to two, this is Hockey 85, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. RC Cola can refresh, revive, renew. RC Cola can really get to you. Cola love and woman. Cola love and man. Nothing really 
it just for you like a RC Cola can. Refresh, restore, revive the nerve. Nothing really gets for you like RC Cola can. Yeah, I'm a cola-loving woman. And I'm looking for a cola-loving man. We'll see John Burrell get an illegal check penalty here as he goes in and pushes Boston into the board. Boston was losing his balance before he went in, but he gave him that extra nudge. Boston's okay. He got off the ice now, but John Burrell serving the penalty. Bemidji in a position to cut the deficit to two if they can score in this power play. And they have scored two goals tonight, one by uh, Scott Johnson, and the other one scored by David Smith in this hockey game. And now they go back to regroup with it as Yetter working behind the net. He'll move it up ice now with 9.15 remaining in regulation time. And uh, the man advantage belonging to Bemidji. The 5-3 to three game with uh, 7.25 remaining here. And a shot in on Gorg and the rebound is cleared. And Bemidji here coming back quite strong here in the third period. And it's cleaned by Burnsville as they go back to regroup. Far from over yet, is it, Luke? It certainly is. Bemidji is really coming back with some power. They're having some opportunities. They don't want to quit, and they're not going to quit. And uh, the Burnsville Braves will go back to regroup. With it is Hammond. Hammond on the lead pass, and uh, it's deflected. And there's going to be play stop now with 6.57 remaining. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Want to get more calcium, vitamins, and protein to help you make it through your day? Six minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the third period. The score is 5-3. Burnsville in front of Bemidji. Both teams at full strength. And it's picked up and controlled by Yetter. Yetter dumping it down to the corner. And uh, Trader on the near wing turning, giving it off in the pass to Finnegan. Going cross ice now as Burnsville setting it up. And Ramswick playing it to the line. Finnegan colliding with a the man there, and with it is Nevitt. Nevitt on the pass to the near boards. Coming back is Fawson. Fawson with the puck, dangling it off the near wing. It comes to Smith. Smith coming in over the line. Smith on the wing, working his way to the net. Shot deflected by Gore. Rebound loose along the boards on the left wing. 6.23 remaining in the third period. 5-3 score, and they tie it up in the corner, and we'll have a faceoff coming up. Well, Bemidji has found new skating legs, and since the power play, they have really put pressure on Bemidji, and they're starting to use their body up front, too. Bemidji coming back with a couple of opportunities, and they're starting to freewheel in the Burnsville zone. If this continues, we could not be through here yet tonight, <laughs> Paul. Well, it's 5-3 now with 6.20 remaining. Lou's talking about overtime. I don't think we're going to have an overtime. I can't believe that Burnsville's going to give up another two goals without scoring one, but... Bemidji's sure making the team that way. And it's set up now at center ice. Coming back over is Palava. He uh, just scored the goal, uh, the third goal of the night for Bemidji. And going back to regroup now is Yetter. Yetter will work it behind his own net. Uh, taking a look to his Boston. And Yetter will work it out of the far side now. On the breakout, knocking it down at center ice. Coming over, trying to pick it up. And Sauer there, but it's played uh, by Burnsville. Back in behind goes Osiki. Osiki around the boards in the near wing trying to bring it out. Sauer trying to hold it in. It goes to Palavo with a shot and it's knocked down in Gorg and way out of the net. He gathered it in and stopped the play. I want to tell you that George Palavo is some imposing presence out there. After he took that shot he's going towards the net. Mark Osiki went to check him and he just sent him into the board like he was you know, much, much stronger. <laughs> watch Palava, number eight, take the shot. Now watch as he continues towards the net. Number 24 is going to go take him out. Look at this. Ouch. Big, strong right wing. <laughs> and off the face off. There's his shot. Knocked down to the rebound. And it's deflected off the stick of Gord. Loose down to the corner. Johnson fanned on a shot as they try to set it to Back the other way. Here's Branson. Branson with a puck and he fires it in and Peters will knock it down and gathers it in and stops the play. Five minutes, 25 seconds remaining. 5-3 Burnsville. Well, Bemidji continuing to put on pressure and almost had another opportunity for a goal there. Just a quick reaction by Kurt Hammond knocking that puck away from the right side of the net. Otherwise, Bemidji was looking right down the throat of an empty net. And Don Sauer could have put it away. And the puck is loose to the near boards, knocking it down is Featherstone. 
Featherstone had it taken away by Smith, trying to backhand it out, did get it to Johnson. Johnson coming in over the line. Johnson with a puck down in the corner on the right side, trying to center it to Palava in the slot, and it's cleared away. Branson back in over the line. Left side over to Trichel. Trichel with the puck. Nice drop pass to Featherstone with a drive. That's deflected along the far boards by Palava. Branson back at the net. It comes over to Smith. And Smith will start out now for Bemidji. 4.52 for American regulation time. Here's Palava. Nice drop pass to Johnson. Trying to pick it up. And uh, Burnsville will regroup and flip it around the boards. And it's clear the length of the ice as Peter comes way out of the net. Plays it all the way back out to center ice. Schrader over through a check on Sauer. Down went Sauer. And uh, the score is 5-3. to three. This is Hockey 85 live from the St. Paul Seven Civic Center. Kevin Schrader sitting in the penalty box for an interference call. And Bemidji getting the opportunity to close to 5-4. to four, Making Burnsville pay in the power, on the power play as they did just in a previous opportunity. And it's set up on the far side now. Head Manning it out over to center ice. Palava with it. And chasing it down. David Smith in the corner of the near boards. And Smith with the puck trying to get some help. And it's played back to the point as waiting there was Fawson trying to control it. Trying to move it toward the slot. Knocking it down to Palava on the point on the right side. Palava trying to go off over to Nevitt. And it was held in. Here's Fawson with it. Fawson cross ice over to Palava. Palava with the drive and it's knocked down. And the rebound is held in by Nevitt. Nevitt with the puck. Back over to Palava with a shot. That's blocked. And backhanding it out over to center ice. And it's broken up there. And regrouping is Bemidji. Over to Fawson. Fawson in over the line on the left wing. Fawson with the puck. Trying to move it to the slot. Going off on the pass over to Smith. And we have 107 remaining in a penalty time. As Bemidji holds the zone. Fawson with the drive. Blocked and knocked down. And it's picked up by Ramswick. And he'll backhand it out over to center ice. Knocked down and regrouping there is Fawson. Darren Fawson for Bemidji. Back in over the line. Here comes Nevitt moving to the net. Tried to go left wing to Smith. Broke it up in Burnsville. Turns it back the other way. Up ice in a hurry. Here's Bloom cutting to the net. Moving it in. Shot pushed wide. And it was deflected by Peters. 3-12 remaining. And it's set up by Burnsville. And we got a delayed call. Going to be called against Bemidji. And that's why the goaltender is leaving the net right now. We're going to have a call against Bemidji. And Gorg is off in Burnsville, an extra attacker out of the ice as they set it up now. Hammond with it. Hammond drives it down in the zone and Peters will knock it down. But that's going to nullify the power play situation, Lou. We're going to have a high sticking call against Bemidji as Bloom was breaking in on the net. He cut towards the net and he was high stick. For high stick. And so a delayed penalty was called against Bemidji and Burnsville very wisely let that clock run down so that they can have their uh, penalty eliminated and then go on the power play. So Bob Smith going off for a penalty for high sticking against Scott Bloom. We'll play four side until the Burnsville penalty is up. 21 seconds. Kevin Schrader will be back on the ice and Burnsville will, will be in the power play. And we have two minutes and uh, 54 seconds for Benning as you get a look at it again. Here's Danny. Here's Bloom breaking in and there's the high stick right over the helmet as Bob Smith trying to regain his balance. Bloom's great speed going around the outside leading in but Bob Smith hit him over the head. The helmet, I'm sure, wasn't intentional, but that doesn't matter. It's still a high-sticking call. And the face-off will come up to the uh, left side of Peters. Steve Peters, a junior goaltender, listed at 5'9", 135-pounder. 91 save percentage is outstanding, isn't it? It certainly is, and especially when you're playing in high school hockey like this and against some of the teams they play against, you know you're facing a lot of good quality shots. And the faceoff will come up now to the left side. And Featherstone in the faceoff circle trying to draw it back. Data was picked up, moving it up ice. Uh, Sauer had it cleared from his stick. Knocked down. We have 245. We're betting at regulation time. It is 5-3 as Burnsville is out in front. But both teams are down to man here as uh, Bemidji in over the line. Fawson with a shot. That's wide of Gorg. Back in behind the net now. Trying to set it up. Burnsville is back at full strength so now they have the man advantage for the next one minute 34 seconds that defenseman darren fawson for bemidji can handle that puck very well and with it is hammond hammond drop pass to the point to return to hammond behind the net trying to pick it up is traveling around to the far side over to trichel moved right across the crease trying to go to branson knocked down trying to bring it out of the zone it was sour he was checked from behind as burnsville holding it in taking aim branson with a shot saved by peters Knocked down and it's cleared with two minutes remaining in the third period. 
5-3 the score. Branson is cut off as he tried to move to the puck. Reichel playing it back to the down. Around to the far wing, it goes to Featherstone. Featherstone with it on the far wing, trying to come across ice over the Trichel. And it's played back out to the center zone. We're picking it up there is Hammond. And uh, whistle play is going to be stopped at the blue line of Bemidji. One thing, even though Don Sauer and Scott Johnson look to be seemingly smaller than those forwards from Brunswick, they never pass up the opportunity to use their body either. And this fellow, Scott Osmondson, you know he's going to hit you back there. Bemidji plays that body quite well. It's been a real physical game, much more so than you would think. The referees, again, have allowed this to play. We haven't seen uh, any marginal calls from the way. They've been good, solid checks. You mentioned last year physical. that you were very happy with the officiating for the entire tournament. What's your thoughts in that area so far I, this tournament? I, I thought that it's been very good so far, especially last game. It was simply outstanding. They let both those clubs play. And yeah. they're doing the same thing here for the most part. And with it now coming back in over the line, Ramswick with the puck off of the pass, moving in. Finnegan looking for the hat trick. Fired it wide. Back over to Luckraft. And the puck is taken away, moving it up ice now. It's a 5-3 game with 1.23 remaining in regulation time. And uh, Palava with the puck down in the corner, trying to work it to the wing. And Palava goes down, coming back is Burrell. There's Burrell in over the line. Burrell passed Lynn, but he lost his stick. And Lynn will try to kick it out of the zone. Ramsvik holding it in. And it's cleared now by Bemidji. As they move it up ice, they're down one by a couple of goals. We have one minute remaining in regulation time. Bemidji needing a couple of goals to tie it up. There's a shot by Palava. And he was checked and forced off the play. Back the other way comes Burrell. And Burrell is upended on a check throw on. With it is Nevitt at center ice, taken back by Burnsville. A collision there, and Palava with a buck. Turns, and he plays it back in. And we now have 35 seconds remaining here in the game, as Bemidji down by a couple of goals, and the puck loose at center ice. Coming back in over the line, and whistling it off. Oh, thought I heard a whistle for the outside. No. Had it set up by Boston. Boston with the puck with 22 seconds per minute. Back the other way, coming in over the line. There's Sowers drive. It's deflected off the body of Oziki on the far wing. Over to try and pick it up now. We're down to 10 seconds per minute. As Burnsville is going to go 23 victories, one loss, and one tie on the year. But Mitzi with the loss, still uh, an outstanding season at 22 and 2. And their tournament action is not over yet because they can go on to the Consolation Championship, which I'm sure they like to have the title, but they're still having a great year. Well, they certainly are. And if they had played the second period the way they played the third period, they might be playing tomorrow in the championship round. Bemidji had an excellent period. They had the play there. They continued to use the body as they had earlier, but even more frequently than they had.